Hi everyone, my name is Juan Camilo Alcaraz. Today I want to talk about uh, a couple of features from RPR Radeon Pro Render uh, related to motion blur and a couple of advanced parameters. So let's start. The first thing you will notice here is that I have a, a scene, a lighting a scene. This is a dragon lighting using uh, RPR. We have an environment, let's uh, take a look. We have an RPR environment that is loading an ABL image. We have uh, four, three uh, different uh, photometric lights that are lighting the, the object and one spotlight that is lighting the, the background. So if I go to the camera view, let me switch to a different layout. Let's select just this one. Okay this will going to be my work before and this will going to be my camera okay so I will press F10 to switch to active shade verify that I have a radion pro render assigned and from this camera I will hit render let me see the size okay it's a little bit I think I have to reduce a little bit the resolution because this particular scene is quite heavy. I mean, uh, the object, uh, uh, the dragon is using uh, 4K maps uh, texture for the for the diffuse, um, for the normal map, um, so it's quite heavy to calculate. But like you can see, this is more or less what I have here. Let me put this, sorry. Okay, so, like you can see here, my dragon have a specular uh, texture. I will going to open the material editor to show you what exactly have this uh, dragon applied. So, let's capture the material. Okay. So, like you can see here, I'm using uh, a standard material with a diffuse map, with a glossness map, and a bump, a normal map. So, all these maps are 4K resolution just for the body. The, the wings have uh, another 2K resolution, and the clouds and the, the horns have a displacement map applied. Uh, I will move to this particular part later. So, as uh, you can see here, I have a, a, the grass, uh, it's a geometry grass, and this is what I have. Okay, so what I want to show you in this particular video, I will not want to go into discuss about materials, I just want to discuss about a couple of parameters from RPR we didn't show. For example, as uh, you can see here, this object is animated. Let me, I will have to cancel this uh, to show you this uh, more fluent let me see I will cancel this particular uh, rendering and I will uh, reduce the resolution uh, maybe I will going to hide a couple of things to make the things uh, works a little bit faster okay so the object is animated and what I want to show you let me hide the grass or leave it. I will just reduce the resolution because I'm rendering right now in HD. I will going to decrease to 600 only. Let's hit render. Okay, so like you can see my object is animated and I want to show you how the motion blur is working right now inside RPR. So this is my object without any any uh, motion blur applied so I will wait until the uh, the progress is cleaning a little bit okay so my object is quite clean obviously the resolution is quite low to show you this exactly how it works 
So inside the Radeon Pro Render settings, we have a motion blur panel here. So we just have to enable, and when we enable this, this parameter will going to override the all the camera values and everything. And like you can see, my object is completely blurred because the scale is uh, extremely high. So I will going to decrease this to a thin. And let's see how it looks. So like you can see, it is starting rendering, it's starting cleaning the image, but right now you can notice how, for example, the wings and the arm, for example, here in this area and this area are blurred because it's moving, it's rotating, the tail, everything is showing exactly what I, I really want to, to show. So working with uh, motion blur in, in RPR is quite easy, like you can see here, you can control the camera exposure and you can control the scale, this will going to affect the how the, the, the motion blur will going to be generated, for example if I, like you can see if I decrease the, the, the exposure, obviously my, my image will going to uh, get darker, so I will leave as default to keep the same color, the same exposure at the image uh, original wi without the, the motion blur enabled. And this parameter will be the key of all the process. You, you have just adjust how much uh, visible you want this particular effect. Okay, so this is more or less exactly what I want to show you with the related to, to motion blur. Like you can see it's a quite easy concept and a quite easy uh, parameter to adjust. The other thing I want to show you here, this time I will going to launch my render directly from my uh, working viewport, is related to a couple of things uh, RPR have related to different modes, different render modes we have. Uh, right now the name is not uh, defined. Right now we have render modes, but maybe in the future we will have a uh, a different a different name but I will going to show you exactly what I'm talking about okay so here I have my I have my my object a little bit closer I will going to press F10 and inside Radeon Pro Render Advanced Settings I have these render modes uh, it's inside a performance settings but it's just uh, how to look, how the render will going to look in other software, it's called uh, AOVs or something like that. So by default we always uh, render the GI, I mean everything, the, the global illumination calculation from the render, but in some cases we need uh, some particular things different than that. For example, we have this one, it's very cool, the ambient occlusion. If I want just a simple ambient occlusion from my scene, I can calculate directly using this particular uh, mode. I just switch to ambient occlusion and hit render. Now like you will notice I am calculating the ambient occlusion from this particular scene. Right now the ambient occlusion is affected by the exposure value, so I will going to disable this to show you better. So like you can see, this is a very cool ambient occlusion like you can see it's moving and all these leaves all these the grass are generating ambient occlusion within each other and the calculation is extremely fast the clean process is quite fast like you can see and you can notice uh, this object for example uh, you can see the horn have a displacement applied and the ambient occlusion is showing me the, the version with the displacement applied. So it's very nice. Uh, else than this mode, uh, maybe another useful, uh, this is the, the, the useful, m the, the best mode we have, else than the, the GI. Uh, else than that, we have another uh, couple of modes that maybe could be useful in composite software. Uh, right now, uh, the normal uh, could be used in composite for some post-processing in Nuke that uh, read or interpret the, the normal of the objects to lightning inside uh, Nuke for example. This will going to render just a, 
the normals of all all the well, you can see here all the the geometry from the object uh, the other we have here for example uh, the wireframe like I said the most common of those modes is the ambient occlusion It's quite straightforward any any user understand exactly what it's used for the other are quite more uh, related to different experimentation maybe we uh, a particular user could find a way to use some of these particular pass passes or, or modes so here for example the wireframe will going to show me uh, you can see the the wireframe of the object so this is more or less what I want to show you from these uh, advanced parameters like I said in previous videos the cool thing about Radeon Pro Render are the, the that is uh, easy to set up I mean you don't have to or you don't need to adjust a lot of parameters to have a very nice render so this is more or less what I uh, want to show you from this so go back right now to production and you will notice this different when you are in production you enable you have this tab enabled render elements when you are in active shade you didn't have it so what what we have here inside the render elements this is the 3ds max default render elements when you hit odd odd you can find rpr render elements we can render the deep the geometry we have a lot of elements we can render so I will going to select all of them I will enable and I will going to define my render okay uh, instead of using defining the render time I will going to use the pass limit I will define the pass limit to 30 uh, remember I have enabled the render passes and I will hit render and wait a little bit until the, the image is uh, done remember it, the image will going to be quite noisy but uh, it's just a matter of waiting but for this particular video I just want to show you uh, how many passes RPR are generating right now some of them are just in work in progress uh, still uh, not completely functional but okay the render has over and uh, like you can see in the corner you will notice something like this for example this is the world coordinates this one is the UV display it will show me exactly the UV seams from each part of the, the geometry this is the normal this is quite similar to the the one generated directly into the, the render mode uh, I have a couple other ones for example that opacity that right now everything is solid so everything looks white the object uh, ID this one the object ID is still in development because the colors we have right now are quite uh, uh, I, I are not stronger it should be more stronger to be easy to select directly when and uh, we move this pass to a composite software but it's okay the material ID is quite similar to the object ID but it's related to the material itself so like you can see all the clothes have the same color in the previous one on each cloud have a different color so the this one geometric normal is quite similar to the other I'm not completely sure about what's the difference and the deep is not set up right now it's not working so okay I think this was enough uh, to show you that we have in RPR we have a couple of things we can do for example related to the render modes inside the advanced settings and the render elements that all these parameters or all these settings we can use for composite uh, purpose we can take a look to see what what else we can achieve with these particular renders so okay guys I hope you enjoyed this uh, short presentation and let's see us in the next video tutorial bye